Hi everyone. Today I'm going to do a multi-track recording tutorial with the Mackie DL series mixers, the DL16S, the DL32S, and the old aging DL32R. I'm going to connect my Mac computer to the USB B port on the back of the DL32R. That is connected to the USB A port on my computer. We will set up a template with at least 16 channels in the DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, and we're going to record a band that I recorded oh, a couple of years ago, and that multi-track recording is going to be played into the DL32R XLR inputs, individual tracks, to simulate a live recording. I opened a new project in Digital Performer and created 16 individual mono audio tracks that I'm going to record the DL32R into. We got to make sure that the patching is set correctly, so we're going to go to the routing page. We click on the USB tab, and we want to make sure that each mic preamp is selected to the correct USB port. And we see here, mic preamp 1 is connected to USB 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, all the way down, all the way down to 32. We only need 16, but that should do it. Now, let's go record, shall we? Take it away, band. Another nice thing to know is that when we're recording these uh, direct signals from the DL mixer into our DAW, none of the EQ, compression, gating, effects, none of that, even the volume faders, none of that will affect the recording. The recording is made directly off the mic preamp, so that's nice. That gives you the freedom to mix and EQ and do things however you want after the fact. Yes. Let's go to another song. Let's go to another song, shall we? Okay, another song. You'll notice all the outputs, that's the bottom little white tab down here, the outputs of all these channels in Digital Performer are all assigned to my audio interface, which is a Scarlett Focusrite in, uh, interface. So they're all going to that. That way I can hear in the headphones while we're recording this. When this next part of this song is done, we'll go just a little bit further and then we'll stop. Then what we'll do is we will sign, assign all these individual tracks back to the DL32R and we'll have a virtual sound check as it were.
Okay, so let's go back and assign these back to the DL32R. Okay, let's do it. We want to save. Now what we want to do is assign all of these. Let's see, get the tracks window here. We want to assign each of these tracks back to the DL32R. We're going to make this one number one, and we're going to go all the way down the line. I won't make you wait. We'll skip ahead. We turned all those record modes off. We don't want those. Okay, so now we can go back here. And we really don't need the to see the waveforms. We could just use the mixer, but we'll leave them both up. And what we're doing now is let's double click each one of these. And what that's going to do is it's going to send the recorded audio back to the DL32R at 0 dB. So they're not all the same volume, but we're not doing any mixing in Digital Performer. In this situation, we're going to use Digital Performer to play the live recording back to the DL32R so we can remix them right here. We have to tell every one of these inputs where we want to get audio from. So first we have to go to the routing page and we want to make sure that the input B tab is selected right there. Let me let me go back. At the input of all these input channels, we had originally selected A because that's the mic preamps. B, if you select B, notice it says USB 1. Now when we play audio into input 1, not the XLR input, into the USB channel, We've selected B, so this channel is going to get audio from USB 1, which is, in fact, the kick drum played back, okay? But is the B input always USB? Let's go look. If we go to USB B, I'm sorry, input B, we can see that all the USB 1, 2, they're all assigned to channel 1, USB 1, USB 2, channel 2, they're all assigned, okay, to the B. In other words, the B input buttons on all those inputs is getting audio from USB channels. Now, we could actually make the USB B channel something different. For instance, let's undo number one. Now when we select the B input on the first channel, it wouldn't get USB, it wouldn't get the kick drum. But what else can we send there? We could send, this is all Dante. Let's go up here further. We could send uh, a live vocalist from mic preamp four to channel one, okay? So now let's go back and look at input one. Here it is. Notice, here's A, that's the XLR input, mic preamp one. But now notice B is actually mic preamp 4. So when you select the B input, that is not necessarily the USB unless you have assigned all of those to USB. So let's go back and change that back to the way we want. There we go. Now there's another really cool trick to change all of the inputs really fast hit this record button, channel input. If you hit A, we just now selected all the A inputs. You can see up here, A. See the little blue A right there on each one of those? That's A. If we go, sorry, I hit the wrong one. <laughs> if we go back over here and hit B, W the touch of one button, guess what? All of the inputs are the USB. The snare, USB, B, USB 2, I mean. So there you go. That's cool. So now when we play back the recording, guess what?
There's all of our levels. Ain't that nice? Cool beans, huh? So let's pan these a little bit. Let's pan the hi-hat a little to the right. Pan these toms a little bit, not crazy. Bass up the center, guitar could be a little bit to the left. pretty easy to distinguish what he's doing. Keys are up, left and right, left and right. We could link these. So now they're linked one fader, it's a lot more convenient. Let's do that over here too. There's the two keys. Let's go to this ballad now. Let's put some reverb on this baby and wrap it up. Go to the effects tab, select on effects, and let's go to a small room, medium room, pre-delay, always want some pre-delay. Let's just leave everything alone, let's go back. Well, we just set the reverb, why don't we hear anything? Well, we have to assign these channels, whatever channels we want to have reverb. So let's go up here, it's an easy way to do it. Effects one. Hat, no. Rack time. Not a lot. Just approximate. Guitar. Keyboards don't need any. Definitely on the vocals. They can't say really. The channels that we want to have reverb on, we set those, but we still don't hear the reverb. We got to go to the reverb returns, which are way down here. Effects one. I would say that's quite excessive, don't you think? Is we've selected effects one over here so we get to see all the send levels that are going to that effect remember we set the snare and the drums a little bit no hi-hat kick could have a little bit listen how much better the sounds with some reverb on the kick on a ballad Okay, so we have a uh, virtual sound check. Ain't that cool?